Welcome to another episode of a Triple Helix instructional video building a West Coast drivetrain. And in this episode, episode 12, we will be assembling the gearbox. And the skills we'll be learning in this episode are essentially how to take all the little bits and pieces and put them together to get a gearbox. So let's get started. Let's build a gearbox. So we cut, we cut these, the two gearbox plates on the laser in, in a previous meeting. So they're, you notice they're different. One of them is, we're gonna call it the motor plate. And the other one we're gonna call the inner plate. Um, the inner plate goes on the inside of the drivetrain. Um, the motor plate mounts right up against the inside of the drive rail. So the very first thing we can do is attach our three motors to the motor plate. You grab it. And uh, we're going to attach, we're going to put a motor into the motor hole. Any one of them. One, two, three. Um, it does not matter which way the wire faces? It does. Let's hold off on that decision too. <clears throat> okay, now flip it, flip it over so we can see it. We're going to take this other plate. This is again the inner plate. And, and kind of compare it. And uh, when we put it over, you notice that there's, there's a large hole and a small hole. At this point, we're ready to attach one of the two screws, and that's going to match up with the big hole. So we're going to attach the, just, the, just the screw. You notice the motor gets attached by two screws. We're going to attach just the screw that corresponds with the big hole. So we're going to do this one, does that, that one there. We'll do this, this one that corresponds with that, and this one that corresponds with that. And the screws that we're going to use for that are these weird looking things. So go ahead and by hand just, just thread one of those screws into the hole. And then we'll repeat that. We don't even need to tighten anything yet. So now we know which screw to put to put in here because it corresponds with this big hole. You notice that the, um, the flange is on the opposite side that we can't see. And here, this other plate, the flanges are going to be on top. The flanges are on, on opposite sides of the gearbox. So now let's, before we do this last motor, let's flip it over and think about what we think about what we've done here. Um, whenever we attach these two mo these motors, three motors, there's two two choices about which which way to orient them. And on this side, the motor is symmetric all the way around, so it doesn't matter. But when we look at the other side, we have these wires coming off, and they only come off on one side. So we have to make another choice about which direction these motors come off. Um, so now is when you should cut to a, a clip of the gearboxes on our other robots where we chose to make all the, all the wires come off on the outside of the, of the circle here. So why don't, we, why don't we set them up so that the wires are all on the outside, which means flipping this one around. Okay. This one with the wire going towards the outside. And those funky fasteners that you're using, what are those? Okay, they're actually an assembly of two different things. The inside part, actually let's take one apart. The inside is is a set screw that's been threaded into a, a female threaded hex standoff. The standoff, I think, is like three eighths of an inch long. It's a 1032 screw. Uh, the set screw is maybe like three quarters of an inch long. Um, and the really neat part about it, the expensive part, is that the set screw has been drilled down the center. So it's called a vented set screw. Um, you can actually push air through it if you want to. Each one of these is actually two parts. And those have been pre-made up? Yep. And, and uh, there's been a little bit of Loctite applied a little bit of Loctite applied in the threads in those parts, and it just sat overnight. I think the next step, why don't we, why don't we install our, uh, our center 72 tooth gear that goes between all these motors and have it run on this shaft. Uh, that'll be the next part. So we could, we could install a snap ring on that shaft, put it through this bearing, put the gear on it, Okay, so this, could, this is going to go in from the bottom. So can you put that in from the other side? 
These are thunder hex shafts going through thunder hex bearings. I think what we actually have to do is, is slide it up and then and then put the bearing put the shaft into the into the hex board. Um, we'll walk that guy up and then spin that guy into place. Good. So if we do this, how how are we gonna get the yeah we can still we can still reach in there and do that. Why don't you go ahead and put this um, this next 48 tooth here on here and then another snap ring and that'll lock together the entire cluster shaft. This backwards though? Yeah, it's backwards. Flaring the flanges of these bearings go on the outside. And then a, then a gear and then a snap ring. Sweet. Before we get to these st uh, spacers, we're going to install the other three fasteners that attach our motors. And th those are these ones. They're socketed cap screws and they're pretty long. I think they're like an inch and a quarter long or something. Um, and we also have to fish this spacer in between these two plates when we install that. So you have to reach in with your fingers um, or maybe with needle nose pliers and get, get that to line up with these, these three holes that are left. And then we'll put that long screw through and, uh, and tighten them up. And these screws are special too. They're, they've also been drilled through. You can see they're, they're, they've got a hole running through the entire length of them that makes them super special and very expensive. It's not super difficult, but it takes a little bit of a reach. All right, so now we have a sandwich of these two plastic plates. Um, we have our motors are now attached with two fasteners on each motor. Uh, and those later, when we tighten them, they'll be the motor will be clamped down to the motor plate very tightly. Um, for, first through this fastener directly to the motor plate, and then the second one through this long fastener, which is clamping using that plastic spacer on the inside. Um, now uh, we need to. Uh, hold these these plates apart at the right distance apart and to do that we have these other spacers um, that we that we made in a, a previous session um, these go in maybe Nia can do this part um, these these slip in on the two sides here and there we're going to use a, another set of fasteners to clamp them down on, on all these these six holes these two um, and these two and then and then we'll do something else with the other these other holes up here so the uh, direction matters because this this one we're going to put a quarter inch uh, hole through and then the other one we're going to put a 1032 hole through. So can you try to press that in? We might have to... So the plates warp a little bit. Um, just kind of they have a natural shape. And while you're doing that I'm going to just loosely thread on this this nylock lock nut onto this onto the back just so it doesn't all fall apart. Right. And then just, just loosely put this nut on the opposite side. Yeah, cool. Halfway done. Do the same thing with this bar. Okay, good. These screws clamp together the tops, this, this top uh, end of the gearbox up here, uh, through these holes. So. What you got to do is put the put the spacer in here, and don't drop it, and get it lined up with the with these this hole, and uh, and then put the screw through the same way, and then uh, and then thread the nut on the back. All right, what's the next step of putting our gear rods together? So I think I think the next step is is we'll tighten all the structural uh, fasteners here, and then we'll do the motors. And I think that'll that'll bring this gearbox into into a little bit better alignment before we before we tighten the motors up. Tighten them up until it's until it just starts to feel stiff. Uh, I don't want you to crush it because you are very strong kids and you absolutely have the power to crush this gearbox, this plastic gearbox.
Um, so now you guys can uh, tighten up the motors. The motors, remember they're attached by two screws each. One of them is exposed out here. You can do that with, with this Allen wrench. And the other one, we're actually going to reach down with a socket and tighten up the uh, hex standoff that's down inside there. And these holes have been sized appropriately that we can, we can put our socket down in there and tighten them up. And again, it doesn't need to be super tight, just kind of a little tight. Um, so if, if we're ass assembling this for the final time, we might use Loctite on the ends of the uh, screws that are attaching these, the motors, because those go into blind holes and we don't have a way to, to keep them tight. So we talked a lot about the vented screws that are all, o all over the place in this, in this gearbox. And there's a purpose for them. And the purpose is to let us squirt air into, into these motors. Um, the motors otherwise are, are sealed. Um, and they, the only way to, that they cool down is by uh, radiation and conduction away from this case. But the hot parts of the motor are inside the case and they really have no connection uh, they have very limited connection between the hot parts and the case. Um, so if you're able to blow air into the motor, uh, you, you have a chance of directly cooling down the parts that are hot. And uh, so far, we haven't, we've, we've just been experimenting with that concept. Um, but our friends at, at 1610 actually did this during the season. They had the same style you know, gearbox. It was, um, it was this design, and they uh, ran ran air from their from the exhausts of their pneumatic manifold, and they every time a cylinder moved, the other side of the cylinder would exhaust, the low pressure side would exhaust, and that air got squirted into the into the gearbox and helped cool down the motors. Um, we don't really have any data about how effective that was, but it's a really interesting concept and something that we're still including in this design because we think it's, it's probably a good idea that, that we're going to do some more, more experiments on and, and learn about. So you, here's the Allen wrench. Go ahead and install these, these three pneumatic fittings into the faces of these three standoffs. Yep. And uh, you're, you're much stronger than the part. So I want you to stop when it when it just starts to feel tight. Yep. Is this one of these? Yep. These, I believe, they're they're uh, they may be brass, or they you know they're either brass or stainless. And if they're brass, then they're super fragile. And they seal with an O-ring that's on the on that face that you're you're screwing into. That O-ring actually seals against the uh, the face of the standoff. So when you're installing them, you can actually feel it start to contact, and it feels sort of rubbery, and you can feel the O-ring start to squish. Cool. So these things accept 530 seconds diameter tubing, and we have some of that. And uh, when you they push, they're pushed to connect fittings, just like the quarter-inch ones that teams normally use. So the next step is to. Uh, install our output shaft. So this is our output shaft. It goes through this bearing and you notice we've we've left off this bearing here and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's start by um, installing a snap ring on the on this in this snap ring groove on that shaft. Alright that gets installed into this bearing from this side, uh, but before that we got to put this 64 tooth gear on that shaft. So go ahead and put that on. So who knows all our our total gear reduction in this in this gearbox? Everybody know? So we we have a 12 tooth uh, pinion on each of our three sims, and that engages with a 72 tooth gear that we can see inside. Um, that's on the same shaft, it's called the cluster shaft, with this 48 tooth gear, and that's driving this 64 tooth gear. 
So all together, if you multiply those two those two ratios, you'll get the total reduction of our gearbox. Um, now we, our our gearbox is pretty functionally complete. We've got motors, we've got a structure, uh, we've, we even have an output shaft. Um, but we need we need another feature, which is going to go right here. It's a it's a it's a bearing that's going to be used for a bunch of purposes. One purpose is to um, to carry the loads on the output shaft, but another is also to align this gearbox with the frame rail. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to have this bearing, which is a it's a radial uh, thunder hex bearing. We're going to take it and we're going to we're going to slip it over this output shaft. We're going to use spacers to put it into this hole, into this bearing bore, so that half of it still sticks out. I think we're going to put five eighths of, of of spacer on this shaft inside the gearbox, and then put our output bearing on. All right. These are. This one goes in first. Either one doesn't matter. All right. All we're doing is we're just adding up to half an inch or five eighths of an inch. So the first one was an eighth, the second one was a half. And now we got a bearing, and then we'll we'll turn it so we can look at the cross section, and we'll see that we have we have half of the width of the bearing sticking out from this inside surface of the motor plate of the gearbox. And we said at the beginning the motor plate is the one that butts right up against the inside of the of the drive rail. So now it's time to do that. Install actually install the gearbox onto the drive rail.